to our dear guests, teachers, fellow Lasallian students, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful day to all. I'm Andrea Mikael C. Di Maano. And I'm Samantha Clay Mbirelayo, your moderators from Grade 9 Efficient for the fourth day of the Lasallian Symposium 2020. Before we proceed with today's session, let us first begin with our opening prayer to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Before we further discuss our topic for today, let's have once again the overall convener of LCS 2020, Eliza K.L. S. Oligan, to call this session to order. This will be followed by the keynote address for today. 
to be given by Mr. John Andre H. Padua, the Academic Chair of the Science Unit of the Basic Education Department. Hi everyone and welcome back to the fourth session of the 2020 La Salle and Climate Symposium. During the previous session, the Green and Galatians delivered us the current situations with regards to the extreme temperatures as an effect of global warming, which is considered as the product of the human-influenced greenhouse effect. For today's session, the Green and Efficients will be presenting rainfall and flooding with Ms. April Ansalutan and Ms. Millicent Mesawi as our panelists for the fourth session of the LCS 2020. Both of them are junior high school science teachers from Valenzuela City School of Mathematics and Science and Caloocan High School respectively. And it is my great honor to call the fourth day of the 2020 Lasallian Climate Symposium to order. For today's keynote address, let us all welcome the Academic Chair of the Bed Science Unit, Mr. John Andre H. Padua. A pleasant day to all our Lasallian partners who join us for today's event. On behalf of the Basic Education Department, I warmly welcome you all to the fourth day of the Lasallian Climate Symposium. Looking back, just to share with you, this symposium was just a near idea, a concept that I thought wouldn't be realized. And with that, kudos to our science teachers and most especially to our grade 9 students for, for pulling off this event, especially during this time that most of us are shorthanded and limited. You have shown your ingenuity, your resourcefulness, and your commitment to partake a proactive response in some timely issues. It is a known fact that our country is vulnerable to different natural calamities. Recently, we experienced great flooding that not only caused destruction of properties, disruption of livelihood, but unfortunately, the loss of precious lives. There were a lot of factors that came into play, but we cannot deny the fact that the adversities we witness are the price we are paying for our long time neglect towards our environment as we propel ourselves towards advancements and development. Albert Schweitzer once said, man has lost the capacity to foresee and forestall. He will end destroying the earth. True enough, Paul Hawken, an, env an environmentalist, asserted that human activities such as deforestation, levee construction, erosion, and overgrazing greatly contribute to the loss of ecosystem, which leads to greater risk of flooding as one of its multitude adverse consequences. Today, I fervently hope that the insights and words that our speakers will impart to us will eventually spark awareness, nurture empathy, and develop responsibility to be more green citizens, having high regards, respect, and care towards our environment. One small effort at a time, one student at a time, and one community at a time. So with that, I hope that your experience will be fruitful for our today's event. And thank you so much. Animo Lasal. Welcome to the fourth day of the Lasalle Climate Symposium 2020. Aren't you excited, Mikael? Oh, I'm surely excited for this one. For our day four of the Lasalle Climate Symposium, we will be dealing with the concern of excessive rainfall and flooding. Rainfall and flooding are popular issues in this time of year. Just recently, we have experienced a strong typhoon which left drastic effects to our country. Without further ado, let us welcome the presenter for this for today's session, Ms. Julian Nikki Kalim Lim, Ms. Dulce Reyes, Mr. David Voidasal, and Mr. John Carlos Figueroa, and Ms. Ronacel Angeli. Climate change and the community. Question number one. Do you believe in climate change? Why or why not? Based on one of the interviewee answer, 
I believe in climate change because it is also evident in other countries. Recently this year, there was a news about forest fires in California. Moreover, I believe in climate change based on the reports here in our country and other foreign countries. There are ice caps melting, sudden drop of temperature in the U.S. and in the cold countries in the West. Here are some proofs that there is climate change happening in our world. Evident in other countries, forest fires, ice caps are melting, sudden drop of temperature, rapid change in temperature, stronger and more intense hurricanes. Question number two. What do you think might be the reason why do we face climate change? Some people do things against the law that destroys our natural environment. This includes illegal logging, intentional burning, farming, and man-made forest fires that is happening in our country. Our simple actions, throwing garbage everywhere that causes pollution in land and water, and the use of spray paints that destroy the ozone layer also contributes to climate change. Here are the most common reasons why we face climate change. Illegal logging, intentional burning, farming and man-made forest fires, humans, pollution, ignorance, and negligence negligence, lack of knowledge. Question number three, how should we prepare for the possible changes in our climate? The interviewees said that since we are experiencing the climate change and higher temperature, we individuals should know about the possible health problems that may, that may arise. As we know, heavy rainfall and flooding causes destruction. To prepare for that impact, we must build houses or buildings that is resilient and or adaptable in the kind of situations. We can prepare for the possible changes in our climate by preparing ourselves, know about the possible health problems that may rise, think ahead, preparedness for the impact, build houses or buildings that are resilient or adaptable, make good use of our technology. Question number four, how is the idea of rainfall and flooding evident to the climate change scenario in the Philippines? Elaborate. We have experienced two typhoons which we that we didn't expect to happen after one big typhoon and then there is another one. It looks like there is abnormality in our weather caused by the climate change. During the typhoon Ulysses, the height of the flood reached above the per a person or worse than that because the climate change affects the sea level rise abnormality in our weather sea level rise climate change flood reach above a person severe and fatal typhoons heavy rain extreme flooding cause harm typhoon ulysses as 2020 is on doi typhoon ulysses winds are up to 96 miles per hour it hit the luzon region causing more major flooding in manila isolating people and trapping them in on their rooftops. According to this article by AFP, authorities have warned people about more incoming landslides and more storm surges. Some said it resembles the typhoon Ondoy. The magnitude of what we're experiencing now is comparable to Ondoy, said by the Marikina City Mayor Marcelino Teodoro. But Ondoy has a higher kill and injury count. What Filipinos went through during and after typhoons. Fast and furious, the floods flew people with enough time to make it to their rooftops. Little refuge from their devastation was provided by their homes. As an example, Mr. Francisco Pagulayan, who lost two of his sons, Lan and Frank, according to him, there was a loud boom, and within seconds, everything was gone. As another example, Ms. Malinlin clamored with her two children grand and two grandchildren and other relatives to the roof of her bungalow just as the kagayan began to overflow her aunt who lived nearby but resisted appeals to prepare for the typhoon in the midst of the chaos and confusion it was only later that day she realized that her aunt was missing her body was carried to the roof so that the rising water would not sweep her away it remained there until the whole family was safe. 
Typhoon Ulysses forced water to spill over the Magat Dam, the Cagayan tributary on the Luzon Island and one of the largest reservoirs in the Philippines. The Cagayan banks were rapidly overflowing. Devastating effects of non-stop rainfall in the low-lying areas of Manila. The non-stop monsoons and rains flooded 50% of Metro Manila. According to CNN News, 500 millimeters of rain have fallen within Manila. This resulted to a mass evacuation of 300 families of informal settlers living along the Pasig River, led by the local emergency response team of Pasig City. Forced evacuation during a state of emergency. According to the Armed Forces of the Philippines, more than 100,000 people were evacuated and at least four people were found dead. Because of this, the government sectors have suspended national events, cancelled flights, and solved barangay problems, among others. The news said it is by far the strongest typhoon out of the 20 typhoons recorded last year. Here are some of the widespread damages and distress caused by typhoons across the entire Philippines. There was an abrupt increase in water level. Water spilled over the Magat Dam that caused se severe flooding across the province of Cagayan. Trees and electric posts fell down and have blocked several road networks. Suspension of work around the region also interrupted the livelihood, livelihood of the citizens. Here are some mitigation measures that can reduce the probable cause of climate change. And all of it is helpful because it lessens the release of harmful emission in the atmosphere. Let's start with the use of renewable energy. This project can be executed through generating solar energy, wind power, hydropower, and others into electricity and by building power plants. It is efficient because it is eco-friendly and can be used for long term. However, there are still downsides in this, such as the capacity of the energy it can hold is not large enough for continuous use and the construction of it is quite expensive. Some of the method also requires a large scale of land and intensive labor to build it. There will be also a time where it can be unreliable due to weather conditions. Despite the downside of it is that this kind of project gives an employment opportunity including engineers, architects, and even farmers. Let's move on to Go Green. Going Green covers the idea of energy conservation, application of 3Rs, and most importantly is reforestation. It can be executed through simple action of recycling and plugging power cords when not in use, and planting. This has a great advantage since it is common to us and I'm sure that you are well aware about this. Also, most of the methods are easy to comply and reforestation is a good choice because it can be a long-term solution. However, reforestation can be a little bit hassle because there are a lot of steps, planning, and maintenance that are needed. Despite the fact that we are aware about, we are aware about, we are aware about it, some of us are still not complying and keeps on ignoring it. Luckily, it will be a great opportunity for community-based organizations to start up projects like tree planting activities. Last but not the least is the shifting to public transportation. As the population increases, buying of vehicles also increase, increases, causing of more air pollution. In solution of that is shifting of transportation, such as cycling, walking, or riding trains. It has a great advantage since public vehicles are everywhere affordable and it lessens the need of road expansion. However, it is not always effective since not everybody is comfortable with public vehicles and during this kind of pandemic, it will be a risk. Today, here are different adaptation methods to prevent mass flooding. The first one is dikes and levee system. It's an embankment built to prevent overflows on flood and damages. It's an effective system because it is cost effective and designed for high water levels and for those who are in high risk of flood areas with high population. But don't get confused by the two. Levees protect lands that is normally dry, but dikes protect land that would naturally be underwater anyways. So it can be a direct solution to floods both ways. But it may increase erosion, which is bad for the landscape, and reduce useful in-stream vegetation due to an increase in water speed that are bad for survival of wildlife. The second one is the use of advanced equipment. We should be preferred for natural disasters like typhoons that we might experience. One precaution is to use safe and long-lasting building materials because not only it needs less maintenance, but it can actually withstand all kinds of natural disasters 
like heavy winds brought by the typhoons. And also, investing in sump pumps will help to remove excess flood water on homes and buildings. But it is also a great defense of extreme rainfall, since some sump pumps is equipped with valves that sense the rise of water levels. When the water gets too high, the sump pumps automatically pumps excess water out of your home and away from your surroundings. The final one is the most important one, raising awareness. It is the most simplest yet the most effective way to prevent the negative impacts of rainfall and flooding. By sharing this information and raising awareness, you can save people's lives because we, at least we have, have the most capability to contribute in our own ways. By listening to typhoon prevention seminars, lectures, or even in casual conversation amongst friends and families, the number of victims will likely decrease because they are taught how they should handle such situations. Aiming for a bigger audience might be hard and our only hindrance is our doubts, but change is always possible and attainable if we do it. Thank you very much for those substantial presentations. Truly, we are able to further understand the adverse effects of excessive rainfall and flooding. This calls us to make our actions to further combat this. Now, let us watch the advocacy video prepared by our own precious section, Nyla Fiction. This will be followed by our open forum discussion between our presenters and panelists. Earth is in big trouble and we humans are perishing from destructive typhoons, endless tsunamis, dry lands, forest fires, to the melted ice glaciers from the mountains. No one will ever know what worse is coming, but we can take an action. We can handle and avoid the worsening of our atmosphere's condition. Climate, Climate change. change. Climate change is the condition of the atmosphere wherein it changes in a specific region over a period of time. Greenhouse gases mainly affects the condition of our atmosphere and it also contributes to the abnormal heating up of Earth's surface, causing climate change. It may sound simple, but it is very destructive. Tons of lives are affected, no one is exempted, and it is becoming worse because of different illegal human activities like cutting trees, burning of plastic, and improper disposal of garbage. Let's take an action. It's time for us to protect our Mother Earth, the home of all living things. Consume less. Simply buying fewer things is the easiest way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Reducing consumption results in less fossil fuels being burned to extract, produce, and ship product around the globe, whether by forging an automobile or using a reusable grocery sack. Invest in energy efficient appliances. Efficiency standards for doses of appliances and products have kept 2.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide out of the air since they were first implemented nationwide in 1987. That's about the same amount as the nearly 440 million cars count on by annual carbon pollution. Look for the energy star label when shopping for refrigerators, washing machines, and other appliances. Recycle. Yeah, recycling can help us stop climate change. Really, that's because it usually takes less energy to reuse materials than to extract raw materials, and thus creates less pollution. Recycling only one aluminum, according to the EPA, can save the amount of energy required to run a laptop computer for more than 5 hours. Reduce water waste. Saving water too decreases carbon pollution. That's because pumping, heating, and treating your water requires a lot of energy. So take shorter showers and turn off the tap while brushing your teeth. Small app will save billions of lives. Everyone can do something about climate change. Either a kid or an adult. Giving hope and spreading awareness, we can all beat and handle it. No one will be left behind. Everyone will start a little spark to start up the fire. All we need is one another and a raging desire. Let us all beat this and bother it. Okay. Uh Good morning. Uh, good afternoon everyone. So ako na siguro mag-start na ma'am. Okay lang po ma'am Sawi. 
Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, first and foremost, we would like to congratulate everyone and we appreciate your efforts in coming up with this kind of event. You know, we appreciate it because at an early age, no, being a grade 9 student, it is uh, highly appreciated that you have some kind of this project wherein dito papasok yung nabanggit nyo sa ano eh sa adaptation no para makita na we started on our learners and also i appreciate your content but before we proceed to that sabi nga ni sir we this is not a research but then i would like to know or i would like to ask further uh about your respondents yung mga inter yung mga interview niya just to know kung ano yung age bracket niya how did you choose your respondents or participants para mas ma-identify namin kung uh, bakit kaya ganun yung responses or bakit ganun yung information na alam nila? Anyone? Um, pa- paano kayo pumili ng in-interview ninyo or yung nag sa inyong questions? We interview our family members and relatives po. Ah, okay. So from that, we can say na at some point, yung hindi man lahat ng age bracket, but then majority, no, may representative. So, from that, may kita natin na yung awareness ng ating community when it comes to climate change is much more uh, evident compared to before. Now, uh, nabanggit nyo dito sa article. Wait, let's, I have the copy of your written report. I am just curious, no? You started with what happened recently. So it is some kind of, uh, yun yung nag-serve as driving force in Nino to uh, come up or discuss this topic, yung, na- yung recently concluded or yung nangyari na Typhoon Ulysses. But on your mitigation and adaptation, uh, I would like to know your side when it comes to, kasi nabanggit niya dito yung creation of dikes and leaves and also the renewable sources. But I would like to know, kasi ang cost, di ba, is uh, the Magat Dam wasn't able to handle okay, the amount of water na, uh, sa, na nasa reservoir. And currently, there are issues about creating another dam. I know, I, I, I'm hoping that you are aware about that one. So do you think that is a good one? Or I mean... Do we really need another construction of different dams to uh, to adapt and also to mitigate uh, mitigate the climate change? In my own insights, for mitigation, we really do, we must really do it. Ah, the the creation of dams. Okay. So, meaning to say, the, our country needs another uh, reservoir, another dam for us to have flood control. How about the others? Yung other ninyong options dito. What do you think is the best one? Which is the best one if we are to choose? For me, promise is to plant more trees because um, it has a lot of benefit for us humans and wildlife and nature po. Okay, uh, I appreciate that. No, because though it is a long-term process, at some point it would. Ang ma- napakahalaga na titingnan natin yung impact nito. Uh, hindi lang sa community, hindi lang sa tao, but also yung greater impact niya. Okay, the, yung pagbuo kasi ng or yung construction of dams would definitely cause. Uh, yung pag, uh, pag-transfer ng people from one place to another because it would require a larger land to create that one. And instead of creating, though it is beneficial at some point, but if we could compare, ganun kasi tayo mag-create or yun yung magandang way for us to decide which is the best. We have to weigh yung pros and cons ng situation. Kung ano yung pros and cons ng solutions na nakukuha natin. Whether, ano ba yung mas greater or uh, para ma-identify natin which is better. Uh, and lastly, yung mga nabanggit nyo dito na mitigation, like for example, Go Green, uh, it is also, ano eh, tag dito, re, uh, I mean, uh, nakikita siya sa community, uh, nag-start siya sa school, di ba? There are schools that are 
uh, having the initiative to come up with the Go Green projects. Uh, tingin nyo, uh, uh, gano'n pa natin, uh, gano'n pa natin dapat pa mas paigtingin? I mean, there are institutions that are starting this one. Uh, but, ang nag-start kasi nun ay mga clubs, tama? Mga usually science clubs ng mga institutions, mga schools. Uh, ano pa kaya yung pwede pa nating mas gawin for us to spread awareness and for us to inform people about the simple things that we can do kasi yung uh, attitude ng tao dun nag-start yung change eh. So this is my last question. Uh, ano pa yung pwede natin, paano pa natin mas makikita yung impact niya or ma-apply na natin siya? Not just by telling that we spread awareness but what is the main way or the simplest way na we can do para mas maging impactful siya for everyone? For me, we can do some community activities or use social media since we're in the middle of pandemic. Okay, right now amidst pandemic, what we can do is to use the social media platform to spread awareness and do something for our environment. So that's it. That's my question. Ma'am Savi, I'm giving you the floor. Um, thank you, Miss April. And um, okay, naman ano? So thank you, then, Mr. De Leon, for having me here. Um, again, congratulations to everyone to Grade Nine Efficiency and to your advisor, Mr. De Leon, for having this very relatable and um, worth worthy uh, symposium. Ayan. So congratulations again. Um, Punta na tayo do sa pinaka. Um, Okay, questions. Um, questions. For the first part, you have your community perceptions and awareness, right? Okay, so the same question then from um, April, yung who are your respondents? Yan, so since nasagot naman na, and then um, I have, wala naman tayo masyado reaction dun because these are based from the experiences of those people. Um, one good uh, kayo ba nag-formulate ng mga questions, uh, grade 9? Kayo po ba? O kayo mukha naman kayo, no? So, um, I appreciate the kind of questioning you have in your paper. Uh, kasi one of the questions there encourages um, participation and initiative from the person itself. Ayan. So, another is from for, quest, for part number 2. Uh, rainfall and flooding in the Philippine setting. Uh, one is uh, really very relatable because most of the information you have there uh, happened lately. Ayun, so you compared on Doha, Ulysses, um, yun, yun lang yun nakita ko dun. Um, pinakita nyo rin yung impact sa different scales, so from the community to different families and into a larger scale sa buong Pilipinas. Ayan, so mag maayos yung pagpapakita ron. Um, and then, uh, for, for part number three, recommendations and mitigations, uh, may napansin lang ako siguro maliit lang na ano to, na detail. I think you should start from the smallest. Sinabanggit din ni ma'am. Kasi we are, we are all part of the community. Lahat tayo stakeholders eh. Um, I think better na unahin natin yung school-based. Tapos uh, followed by the community. And then yung national level. Yung sa recommendations and mitigation. So start tayo sa school. Um, siguro okay din kung may ginagawa yung uh, TLSAU ng mga projects. Uh, better kung mailagay din natin to dito. Kasi it showcases ano yung ginagawa nyo, Lasallians, di ba? Uh, in saving and protecting the environment. Ayan. Um, ayan. So, hindi ko na masyado, uh, mag, hindi na ako masyado mag-react dun sa paano siya sinulat. Well-written naman. Um, Well-research yung paper ninyo. Kumbaga, um, yung backup ng information ay maayos. Um... Okay, so tingnan ko yung paper nyo, ha? Okay, so sunod-sunod naman siya, halos. Ayan, okay. So, question. Ito na yung question ni ma'am. Um, after writing your paper, what are your realizations? As grade 9 students. 
ayan, uh, in a smaller picture muna. After writing your paper, what are your realizations? At first po, um, it made me realize na um, I told myself, ah, may climate change nga pala. Since parang nakakalimutan na po natin. Kasi um, we can see the effects eh. Parang wala pong action na nangyayari. We can see na ang laki ng impact sa buhay natin dahil nga sa pabago-bago pong weather natin. Kaya I realized na this is not something na kila ano hindi natin pansinin. This is really a big issue. Okay, now, uh, what up? Thank you. What about the others? Miss, my realization po is that kahit students pa lang po tayo, kapag nagtulungan po tayo, malaki po ang impact natin sa environment po natin. Okay. Um, uh, can you give me three important um, takeaways that I can uh, have kasi as a panelist and as uh, as an audience can you give me three important takeaways okay you can have you can give me at least one and then yung others sila nga magpo complete um for me po first is we must not only spread awareness but also do some actions po okay Okay, some more. Ayan, so I need three. Isa pa lang, isa pa lang. Yes, yes. Be okay. a role model to others po. Para po ma-encourage din po sila gumawa ng mga activities. Okay. And lastly? You can even put it in a casual conversation amongst friends and your families. Okay, so inormalize natin ito, no? So inormalize natin yung usapang ganito within the within our family and within our circle. Okay, so thank you. Um last na question ko. Um in the past um in the past days, uh, there's a battle I think of the um, between the go hindi naman siguro battle, pero uh, between the government, the mining companies, the LGUs and even from uh, the public may there's a clamor, di ba? Hindi naman tayo kulag sa ano man, sa ano nangyari sa Cagayan, some parts of Rizal and Marikina. Now, um, what is your stand here? May I know your stand? As a student, ayan, so smaller picture muna tayo. Okay, may I know your stand in this issue? Uh, my stand po is sa mga um, people in the community, especially Cagayan po, since sila po yung naapektuhan. Okay, um, your stand regarding, um, ano ba dapat? Uh, may naisip ba tayong paraan as mitigation effort na dapat siguro gawing hakbang ng government uh, as um, para gawin or kailangan ba natin ng konting pangil sa ating batas or kailangan ba natin as, as um, the common public, meron ba tayong gawin? Ano kaya yung pwede natin gawing um, adjustment or adaptation dito sa mga nangyayari na to? Kasi minsan, di ba, madalas tayo naghahanap uh, what is the government doing? Nasaan ang presidente? Um, so, in our own simple ways, ayan, so bagoyin ko na, rephrase ko na lang, in our own simple ways, as a student, as grade 9 students, you have your paper na, paper na already. Um, can you please give me at least one more um, one more way on how to act ayan, as um, nature guardians ng Pilipinas. Ayan, something more sustainable. We could sign a petition for changing other people's, other people's ideas and opinions. That's nice. Okay, what about the others? Um, not, ano, wag po tayong mag-rely uh, on the government only kasi not all the times naman po na gagawa po sila ng action or tutulong po sila. So, we must do some um, individual actions na po. Okay, so, 
Malena? Okay, so again, that would be all. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, grade 9 efficiency. Thank you very much to all our presenters as well as our audience for today's symposium. We are truly grateful for having all of you here. Thank you for watching and listening up till the very end of our symposium. We are thankful for watching and listening till the end. We would also like to thank our dear panelists, Ms. April Ann Salutan and Mrs. Millicent Maysawi for being here with us throughout the event. We are very grateful and thankful for having you here despite of your hectic schedule. Before we officially end the fourth day of the La Salle Climate Symposium, let us call once again the Secretary General of LCS 2020, Kimberly Lazatin, for the wrap-up. This will be followed by the singing of our alma mater hymn. Once again, I'm Andrea Mikael C. Di Maano. And I'm Samantha Queen Bilayo your moderators for the fourth day of the La Salle Climate Symposium 2020. Let's all remember to protect our environment so that we won't have any regrets in the future. Always remember that our climate matters and the future matters. Animo La Salle! Thank you for that very informative presentation, Green and Efficiency, which are very helpful, especially because our country just recently experienced successive flooding due to strong typhoons, Rolly and Ulysses. Thanks to our panelists for today, Ms. April Ann Salutan and Mrs. Millicent May Sawi for providing all the necessary facts with regards to climate change. And for our last La Salle and Climate Symposium, it will be presented by the students from Grade 9 Corinthians, wherein they will be tackling the most important of all the effects of climate change, which is the socio-ecological factors. See you again. Hail, hail, alma mater, hail to the la salle. We hold your banner high and bright, a shield of green and white. We'll fight to keep your glory bright, and never shall we Yeah.